started. It's uh, seven, a couple of minutes after seven, which is our starting time. And moderators always believe in starting on time. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm Jim Anker, a Bolton Town moderator. And this, this uh, session this evening is an informational session about town meeting in general. Uh, I, uh, I will give you a little overview, which I'm, some of you definitely have heard before, about what town meeting is and basically how it works. But really, what I'd really like to do this evening is uh, hear from you folks. Uh, ask questions, uh, that is, you ask questions, and I'll do my best to answer. Um, make whatever comments you want and, and have some discussion about, uh, about town meeting. Um, the New England town meeting goes back to the original settlers uh, who literally, the, the first settlers who set, uh, English settlers, I'm not talking about the Native Americans, which uh, who actually also had their meetings, uh, a form of town meeting, council, tribal meeting themselves. But uh, the first English settlers started having town meetings following basically the, the basic principles of the English Parliament. And uh, what has evolved into our town meeting in New England today uh, came originally from, from that. Every town in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is required to have an annual town meeting, uh, usually in the May to June time frame. And the town meeting uh, in Massachusetts in particular, and New England in general, is the legislative body of town government. That's uh, the body that uh, makes, takes uh, the votes and makes the decisions about uh, a lot of very important stuff in town. Uh, the budget, the annual budget being the biggest probably, and uh, any number of other issues that come before the town as well. Acquiring property, um, creating bylaws, um, zoning, all sorts of things. There are 351, I think, towns in the Commonwealth. 353 in the Commonwealth. Uh, most of those are uh, open town meeting. 260 of those are open town meeting, and 36 are representative town meeting. The balance are either city councils or town councils. Open town meeting is the most common, obviously. That is um, a town meeting where every voter, every registered voter in the town may attend and participate in the town meeting. And um, we encourage, uh, we never get every voter, but we encourage people to come and participate in town meeting because that is where we make these important decisions. The, um, the moderator, uh, the position I currently hold, is an elected position defined under Massachusetts general law as the authority who uh, regulates, is the word in MGL. The meeting decides questions of order, calls votes, so it basically runs the town meeting. Uh, there are a set of uh, guidelines, there are laws and guidelines and parliamentary procedures that we use to run a town meeting. Mass General Law has a set of laws that govern town meetings. The uh, Massachusetts Moderators Association publishes a book called Town Meeting Time. Kelly had put a copy up here, which is a, a handbook of parliamentary law specifically for um, town meetings. We have our own local bylaws, every town does, uh, part of which governs how we run our town meeting. And then we have our own local customs and traditions, which are generally not written down anywhere. They're handed down from <laughs> moderator to moderator uh, and just become part of the fabric of the town and the way the town runs its, its town meetings. Um, the warrant is the agenda for a town meeting. The warrant has uh, articles on it, which are the basically the agenda items. These are the... the um, pieces of business that the town meeting is going to address when, uh, when we convene and start, start taking care of our business. And in Bolton, the, the warrant is prepared by the selectmen. It's their responsibility to prepare the town meeting warrant. And uh, they do that in conjunction with the advisory committee and uh, all the department heads and boards and committees in town. It's a very um, engaged and uh, detailed and collaborative process that ends up with this. And within the warrant are the articles, the agenda items, which we, by uh, Bolton bylaw, are required to go through sequentially. Uh, start with the first one and go through every one. And we can't end, we can't dissolve our town meeting until we have taken action on every single uh, article 
in the in the town meeting warrant. Um, people, voters, registered voters, have a um, right to attend the town meeting and a right to um, to speak uh, as much as the meeting uh, will allow. The logistics of the meeting will allow them to. Um, Many people don't wish to speak, which is fine. They listen, which is good. And uh, what we want is everybody ultimately to vote on the motions that, that come before the meeting. Um, in speaking, it's very, in Bolton, every town has a different way that allows people to, to speak. In Bolton, we have a couple of microphones down at the end of uh, each of the aisle at the high school auditorium where we meet. And anybody who wishes to speak when a motion is before the meeting, can come down to the microphone and be recognized by the moderator and state his or her name and address and then address the meeting. Um, voting is uh, once all the discussion is done on a, on a motion before the meeting, we, we, uh, we being the, the moderator, uh, calls for a vote. Generally, we do a voice vote. Uh, I just call out all in favor, all opposed. And um, if it's clear, I just call that uh, from listening to it. If it's not so clear, then we will we'll do a counted vote where people raise their, um, their voting sticks that you get issued when you check in, and, uh, and we'll do a counted vote. Uh, some towns have people stand. That's, that's where the stand and be counted phrase comes from. Uh, you know, all the I's stand, and then they sit, and all the nays stand, and they get counted. Uh, different towns do it in, in different ways. Um, and then we end the meeting after we've gone through the entire warrant all the articles in it will have been uh, acted on in one way or another. And there are many, actually, a variety of ways articles or, or motions under the articles can be acted on. And once the, uh, the meeting is concluded, um, I'll take a step back. Our meetings generally go, generally go one night. Uh, if they go more than one night, we, we adjourn from that night to, it's called adjourning to a time certain. Usually it's the next night at at 7 o'clock, which is the time we generally meet. Once everything is done, then the meeting dissolves. And uh, once a town meeting is dissolved, that town meeting is over. Everything that uh, we needed to do has been done, and there's no going back. It's all, it's all done, a fait accompli. And uh, anything that needs town meeting attention has to wait until the next town meeting, whether it's a special town meeting or, a, or, an, or the next annual town meeting a year later. So that's, that's the broad overview. And I know many of you, um, probably most of you in here, know all that already, but just a little background. So uh, really what I'd like to do now is just hear from you folks. Uh, if you have questions you want to ask about anything related to town meeting, uh, comments, observations, whatever. What was the origin of the town meeting? It was in place so when Bolton became a town. But did, was it something that the colonists brought with them? Yes. Well, yes. Uh, I have read that uh, like the original English uh, settlers in New England and Plymouth, one of the first things they did was, as you were talking about earlier, uh, was hold a town meeting to decide what to do. Where are we going to live? How are we going to organize ourselves? Uh, and town meetings uh, early on used to be held uh, as frequently as once a week because um, there were not established, I mean the towns weren't established and the, the town government wasn't established. It was all, everybody was still figuring it out. And so they'd get together as a group once a week. Well, actually then it was all the men got together <laughs> once a week uh, and figured out uh, what they needed to, tried to figure out what they needed to do. and. Uh, how and where and when to do it and who's going to do it and if it needed paying for how we're going to pay for it. And they would actually do that uh, once a week. Um, and it used to be a requirement that you attend town meeting. And if you did not attend town meeting, you got fined. Um, and I, I can't even begin to comment on how significant the fine was. I have no idea. But, uh, but it was a requirement that the men attend town meeting. And if they did not, they got slapped with a fine for it. So yes, it started as soon as the first English settler, I mean our form of town meeting started as soon as the first English settlers set foot on the New England coast. But did they come over from England with a model? 
Well, the model, the, the model of the English Parliament, basically, was what they started with, and just used that, adapted that for their own little, uh, their own little conclaves. And uh, the situation, I mean, it's not, obviously not exactly the same, uh, a, a group of whatever, 20 or 50 uh, settlers building cabins and trying to, to scratch a living out of the land, uh, figuring out how to do it is not exactly the same as uh, the, the Houses of Parliament back in London and all the formality of that. But they, it's basically based on the same principles. What else? Dave? Um, <coughs> appealing a ruling of the moderator, how does that work? Uh, in Massachusetts, it's, or in our town meetings at least, it's not done. So that there's no procedure for, if you think the moderator has made a mistake? Uh, uh, raising a point of order would be the way to do that. And does that take a two-thirds vote to prevail? Or? I'm sorry? Does that take a two-thirds vote to prevail, or is that? No, there's no vote at all. The moderator just decides whether or not the point of order is valid. Right, right. Uh, under the authority of MGL 3915, the moderators granted the authority to regulate the meeting, decide questions of order. And uh, the way a, a, a point of order works is someone in the audience will, I'm supposed to say, I rise to a point of order, but you generally just call out point of order. And I'll ask that person to stand up and state their point of order. And, uh, and then I decide, the moderator decides if it's a legitimate concern, if something uh, wasn't done properly, <coughs> or should have, <coughs> excuse me, or uh, should have been done differently, or not. Uh, but that, that decision is, uh, lies entirely with the moderator. I have a question about amending a motion. If, if there's a motion, say, to, to cut a budget item, could there be an amendment to actually increase that budget item, or would that not, would you as moderators say that's not consistent with the motion? Though you could say, don't cut 40000 from the library, cut $4 from the library. Would, would that be an appropriate, if the, the original motion is cut $40,000 from the library budget, could there be an amendment, let's make that $4? You're talking about amending the amendment? Yeah, well, that's the motion. Amending if the motion if the motion is on that line item to cut the library budget. Well, okay. The main motion would be to to pass a mo to the motion would be to pass forty thousand dollars to allocate forty thousand dollars for the library. That's the main motion. A motion to lower that would be a motion to amend. So the motion to amend would be to take that line okay. item and lower it to but, so whatever. But to amend the amendment. Yes. But that also falls within the general scope issue, which I'm, most of you have heard about. So if there's a motion to decrease a budget line item by um, $10,000, and that's before the meeting, uh, the, uh, the meeting has to deal with that motion to amend. Now, it is acceptable for another layer of amendment, a motion to amend the amendment, and it's, again, the moderator's call. Uh, you could, one could change, could m move to change that, that $10,000 mm -hmm. figure to um, $5,000 or, I guess, $4. Mm -hmm. It gets to be a judgment call. At that point, you might as well just, you just vote against the amendment. <laughs> Uh, there can only be, there can be two levels of amendment. There's the main motion, there can be a motion to amend the main motion, and there can be a motion to amend the amendment. You got to, you stop there. There can't be another level of, but, but and you have to deal with the most recent one first. So the motion to amend the amendment would have to be dealt with first, and then the motion to amend the main motion would have to be dealt with, and then you go back to the main motion itself. But our entire budget table there at the back of the warrant is, in fact, motions for each of those appropriations. Yes. Yeah. Well, the budget's a complicated one. In fact, the budget is one motion, one main motion, with a whole lot of parts. <coughs> and um, that is the way our town, and really all towns in the, in the Commonwealth, as far as I know, 
handle uh, the budget is to go through it department by department and deal with each department and each line within the department before proceeding to mm -hmm. the next. Um, for simplicity, for um, to, to avoid confusion on people's part, and any changes, any motions to amend any any one of those has to be dealt with before you can move on to another one. Uh, there's a, a procedure called a parliamentary procedure called dividing the question, which um, <coughs> can be moved from the floor, or the uh, moderator can unilaterally decide to do that him or herself. If it seems, if it makes sense to the moderator to do that, uh, and that that applies to a main motion with distinct parts. Now the budget is a main motion with distinct parts. We've never had to divide it. There's never been any reason to divide it because basically we divide it. The way we go through it is dividing it and dealing with each step by step and dealing with each. Uh, if there are any proposed changes, dealing with each change as we go along. When we, when we get to the end of the budget, if there have been any changes, uh, someone, not the moderator, has to figure, calculate what those changes are. And then we need to uh, change at the beginning of the budget, as you all know, is the amounts of money and where their total number of uh, allocations that go toward the total bottom line of the budget. So if anything changes as we're going through the budget, we have to go back at the very end and change whatever needs changing for those allocations. Once that is done, then we vote on the whole budget as amended, if it has been amended. And if there is that, what's it called? To, something to divide? Dividing the question. Dividing the question. Is that up for debate, or is it like a calling <coughs> the question where it's just we're going to vote? And well, as I said, dividing the question can be uh, moved from the floor and debated, or it can be a unilateral call by the moderator. But if it's from the floor, it, it's something that's up for debate. It's not yes. just someone made this motion and we're going to vote. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, I'd like to raise the possibility that um, even if there are no changes made to the budget, somebody might want to amend um, item E anyways. And item E is one of the allocations. Well, item e, you, you said you go all through the budget, and then if there were a change, we'd have to go back to the right, beginning. Right, right, right. I want to raise the possibility that even if there's no change, we would still have to go back to the beginning part. Or would you require somebody who wanted to do that to make that amendment uh, first? Because oh, I see. I see what you're asking. Yeah. Uh, no, that could be done at the end. Yeah. Uh, it's it, logically it makes more sense for me to go through the whole budget and see see if we have any changes right. before trying to change all allocations at the front end of it. But even if there are no changes to line items, uh, a motion can be made to, to amend. To change that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Who would you recommend do the calculations? It should be at least two people. Yeah. Uh, the town accountant uh, or treasurer, I would say, and um, and I would say somebody from the finance committee should, or advisory committee in our case, should each do it, see what they come up with. Yeah. We want to be sure we come up with the same number, right. uh, whatever it is. It uh, wouldn't hurt to have more than two people do it. I mean, it's depending on how many changes there are, it shouldn't be that complicated <coughs> to figure out just how, what the dollar difference is between what we started with and if any of it has been amended, what we now have, and so what, what, the, delta, what the difference is that we need to deal with. Yeah? Can voters come and go as they please, or are there yeah. restrictions? Yeah, you can come and go. A voter can enter the meeting and exit the meeting whenever they want. Uh, I mean, we'd appreciate it. For the sake of the meeting, we appreciate coming and going to be as, as uh, discreet as possible. Uh, but there's no requirement that you have to be there at a certain time and you can't leave until a certain time. Uh, it's, I mean, I'm sometime asked if, sometimes asked if people can, uh, people have a certain interest in certain articles that are going to be coming before the meeting, and is it okay if they show up just for those? Yeah, sure. Uh, I can never tell exactly when those are going to be, and uh, you take your chances if you're, if you're going to try to do that. But sure, you can come and go. You need to register. The town clerk uh, and her, her uh, checkers 
are uh, set up at the front of the, in the hall going into the auditorium. You have to, every registered voter, and actually non-voters too, uh, have to register when you go into the meeting. And once the meeting starts, uh, they move a table, or there actually is a table in the meeting, just inside the doors, and one of the checkers is still sitting there to register people who come in after the meeting has, has started. You don't need to unregister when you leave. You just need to register when you, when you come in. Um, and I mentioned non-voters, which um, most towns, and uh, us included, allow non-voters to attend <coughs> town meeting if there is room and if it doesn't um, cause any voters uh, inconvenience, basically. Non-voters can only observe. They may not participate, they may not speak, and certainly may not vote. And uh, we have a, a section We've been a little loose about this, but we're, I think we're getting more, um, more organized about a very definite section where, if there are non-voters, where they sit, just so we can be sure they're not mixed in with everybody else and voting, getting caught up in the moment and voting when they, <laughs> when they really shouldn't be, which possibly has happened in the past. Not that it would have changed the outcome of anything, I'm sure, but um, so non-voters need to register when they come in as a non-voter. Uh, they don't get a voting slip, of course, and they need to sit in the designated area, which uh, the town clerk is in charge of uh, setting aside. I mean, with the two of us decide where that's going to be. And, um, and they can observe. So that's, and that's the extent of it. Dave? I, I do worry about voice votes uh, and non voters. Uh, I can think of yeah. an instance where I felt there was some non residents. <coughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, I admit we had this, this town meeting we had at Florence, special town meeting we had at Florence Square uh, School a couple of falls ago was um, we had way more people than any of us had anticipated, and we had way more non voters there than any of us had anticipated. And even though uh, the town clerk had told those folks where to sit, um, it's really difficult to control, and I don't know that they all did, and that, and that they weren't mixed in with everybody else, and that they didn't get caught up in the moment and yell out their vote when yeah, they shouldn't have. Yeah, that was a very difficult situation. Just there weren't enough seats for Right, them. right. I mean, that's, you know, a lot of you were there. That's when people were lined up in the, along the aisle against the wall, and uh, that was, uh, yeah, that was one of the more challenging <laughs> town meetings that we've had. Plus it was, well, not surprisingly, that was one of the town meetings where we had some items on the warrant that were uh, <coughs> extremely high interest and generated a lot of um, enthusiasm and passion uh, from people in the audience. And um, it got crowded, it got hot, um, people got worked up some, and, uh, but we got through it. Uh, democracy was served and, uh, and uh, democratic life went on. But yes, that's, that's a valid point we need to be mindful of, for sure. Clark? What's the, the standard um, on moving the question when people seem to get impatient into a debate yeah. and then they say move the question? Is that, do you as moderator have discretion to say, well, it's a little too soon to do that? Uh, the moderator does have that discretion. Mm -hmm. Uh, the moder uh, moving the question, everybody probably knows, means uh, is a motion to cut off debate and go straight to a vote. And that's, um, it needs to be made by someone at a mic recognized at a microphone. It, it itself is not debatable, and it needs a two-thirds vote to pass. So uh, when someone feels that there's been enough discussion on some particular topic, that person can uh, can come up to a microphone and be recognized and say, Mr. Moderator, I move the question or the previous question. Or actually, if you say almost anything with question, there are, many, there are various forms of wording, but if you say anything with question in it, other than <coughs> I have a, a question why we're here tonight, but uh, that basically means uh, let's, I think we should cut off debate. Let's vote on cutting off debate. And so um, if the moderator feels, OK, we've been doing this a reasonable amount of time, Let's, let's see if the meeting wants to end debate and go straight to a vote. Mm -hmm. Then it's put to the meeting for a, for a vote of a two-thirds majority for a vote. The moderator also has the authority under the, uh, the granting authority of mass general laws 
to simply decide that we've had enough discussion. And uh, generally, I will, I think I'm fairly um, liberal in allowing discussion uh, on, I mean, it's usually the big, the big items where we'll go on for an hour or so. And once we hit the hour mark, I figure we've probably said everything that there is to say about this, and we're circling back around on ourselves here and repeating ourselves. And unless someone else has something really new to say, we're, let's just end debate and, and go to a vote. And if someone's still at the microphone, I'll say, okay, we'll, we'll hear from you, and then that's it. So if someone moves the question before that, and I think, well, okay, it's, that's been long enough. Let's see if the meeting wants to quit. Then, yeah, that's fine. And it's not a, it's not a hard line. It uh, depends mm -hmm. on what the motion is before the meeting, how much discussion there's been, and how much information has been uh, put before the meeting in that discussion, too. It's, it's being reasonable, basically. Yeah? Does every vote um, that's brought forward have to win by two-thirds? No, no. In fact, most uh, motions, most votes at town meetings are a simple majority, which means simple majority is 50% plus one. There are no ties in uh, a town meeting vote. If there are 200 people at the meeting and some motion needs a simple majority and 100 vote yes and 100 vote no, that motion fails because it did not achieve a majority. If 101 vote yes and 99 vote no, then it passes, or vice versa. Um, and there are no ties, which is an interesting concept. For a two-thirds vote, uh, it needs a two-thirds majority vote, like the moving the question requires. Uh, zoning, any zoning, uh, an article, I mean a motion to uh, create or change zoning requires a two-thirds vote. Any motion that entails borrowing requires a two-thirds vote, and there are some other ones. Uh, that, would, that would require two-thirds exactly, or at least two-thirds exactly to pass. And if it's not an exact two-thirds, like if there are 100 people voting, and um, 60, see if I get the numbers right here, <laughs> 66 vote in favor, and um, 34 vote opposed, that would not have passed. It needs 67 to pass. So does that answer your question? Yeah. 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 How do we know how many people are in the room? Uh, how many people are in the room? Yeah. Well, the town clerk, I never know until after the meeting's over. I mean, I can look out and ballpark it. Uh, we know the auditorium holds, I forgot what the auditorium holds, but it's 600 and some people. Yes. Close to, it's like 650 or something like that, the high school auditorium. Um, we know after the fact, because the town clerk uh, and her checkers ch check everybody in who's voting, and uh, presumably everybody in who's not voting as well, and uh, they, they check their records after the meeting is over and do a tally, and we then, we then know how many people were registered. I always make that distinction, how many people were, were registered at town meeting. So do you explicitly vote no or yes and no to things or? Yes. Okay. Yeah, every motion that, exactly. Every motion that comes before a town meeting has a yes or no vote. I mean, that's it. It's either yes, I'm in favor of this, whatever it is, or no, I'm not in favor of this, whatever it is. So you're abstaining, but just not? Yeah, you just don't vote. If you in, don't want to. And Jim, you, most of them are voice votes, and yeah. the moderator's deciding, do we win or lose, or is it too close? And then you need to hold up your. Yeah, yeah. Most, most are voice votes. Is there a question here? Yeah, on a counted vote. Uh huh. Uh, the majority or the two thirds plus one is determined only by those who vote correctly. Correct. That's a good point. That's a good point. It's. Uh, it's only, actually it's a distinction I try to remember to make, but it's, it's not the number of people, when you're tallying votes, it's not the number of people registered, it's the number of people who actually vote. And as Larry was saying, on a voice vote, which is what most of them are, I just listen. And uh, for the most part, I, can, I think I call it pretty well. If it's too close to call, then we do a counted vote. You hold up your, your voting slip, they're different colors every town meeting. 
and the, the tellers count them and they give the count to the town clerk. She gives the count to me and I announce, I announce whatever it is. And if, you, if someone chooses not to vote, they don't have to vote. You're not required to vote. What are the rules surrounding a ballot vote? Uh, secret ballot. <laughs> yes. Uh, those, thankfully, are rare. Uh, a secret ballot can be, as with many things, can be called by the moderator or can be decided by the meeting. Uh, if, if the moderator, and I have to say I am very, very stingy in um, calling for a secret ballot, I, I, with very, very few exceptions, I don't think an open town meeting is a place for a secret ballot. Uh, however, there is a, a motion, a, a parliamentary motion that can be made from the floor called fixing the method of voting, where someone, say Mr. Moderator, I, I move that we fix the method of voting on this motion to a secret ballot. Uh, that needs to be seconded. That is debatable, and it's decided by the meeting by a simple majority. So if the meeting wants to have a secret ballot on something, and um, a majority of them want to have a secret ballot on something, someone makes that motion, then we will. It's uh, time consuming, uh, but it's secret. No one, no one knows what you voted because you, you get a, well, everybody has to get up and walk around to the front of the room and get a voting slip and then put in either yes or no into a box and then go back to your, get a new voting slip and go back to your seat. And uh, the whole process, and then they have to be counted, and the whole process can take a while. Um, so we, we've only had a few of those. I don't think there's ever been one when I am moderator, but there's only been a few in Bolton Town meetings that I can remember. Uh, they're very, very rare. Um, as far as being concerned about what other people think, or, or not, let, not wanting other people to know how you voted, uh, personally, I think a voice vote is just about as anonymous as you can get, except for the people sitting on either side of you. No one's going to know if you said yes or no when the vote was called. Uh, and it really, maybe the person on each side of you, and that's about it. Um, doing a counted vote, uh, yeah, I mean, people can see you. But uh, again, uh, personally, I think that's part of the process. And um, it's an open meeting, and um, I, I understand some people are shy about having other people know how they voted on something. Uh, but, uh, but that's how it works. How many people are registered to vote? It's about 3,500. Do you know the exact number? Well, it's, it's about 3,500. In Bolton, uh, we have about 3,500 registered voters <laughs> out of a population of 5,500. 5, since I've been moderator, the uh, highest attendance we've had at a town meeting, I think, is 640 something. And we've had another 600 and change in, in the 500s. It t depends entirely on um, what's on the warrant. <coughs> if it's a very routine housekeeping kind of warrant, we'll get, we've never had a problem getting a quorum, which is 75 in Bolton. We've delayed the meeting a few times yes. to get to city. Uh, yeah. Not too long, I don't think, but yeah, yeah. Those, the, the routine meetings, the yeah. ones with a very routine warrant, with really basic housekeeping stuff, we, our biggest concern is getting a quorum so we can take care of business, which we always have done. Yes. Uh, but yeah, you're right, Bob. We've had to, a few times we had to wait uh, 10 or 15 minutes before we got 75 registered bodies in there. <clears throat> Dave? My memory is if uh, people have doubts that the moderator got the call right on a voice vote, did seven Correct. stand up and ask for a counted vote, then we... Correct. It's not a secret ballot, but we... Correct. Raise it. Correct. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, on a voice vote, the moderator has the authority to call a voice vote for a majority and uh, also a two-thirds, simple majority and also a two-thirds majority. In either case, if seven, at least seven registered voters in the audience stand up, they have to stand up together and say, I question the vote, uh, 
or something to that effect. Not, not, move, the, not move the question. But. Have, have you ever been challenged? I don't remember that. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Turns out I've been right every time. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's, that's part of Massachusetts general law, as well as a Bolton bylaw, too. If seven registered voters stand up and say, I question the vote, and I got to be able to, they got to stand up together so I can count seven bodies, at least seven bodies, then uh, on a voice vote then we will do a counted vote if people hold up their, their tickets. After we do the counted vote, a counted vote can't be questioned thusly. Uh, a counted vote is a counted vote. And um, once it's counted and announced, that's it. We move on to the next article, the next motion. That's a good question. Do you think this town meeting is going to be particularly um, <laughs> Defeated, or like, do you think they're going to be lively, engaging? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, I think, yeah. I think we'll have, I think we'll have some good hey, activity. <laughs> I think we'll have some good activity. Uh, I think there are uh, a number of, of articles on the warrant where people have um, strong feelings and some differing perspectives, where we're likely to get some. Um, some lively discussion and exchange of views. Yeah, but aside from the budget, the village overlay will always get people roused. Yeah, I'm not going to count on, uh, comment on the specifics, but uh, yeah. yeah, in general, I'll just keep it general. Yeah, I think so. I think so. What the village? Yeah. How about you know? That's the other thing. You never know either. Well, that's the other thing. That's you nice. never know. You never know what's going to be. I can't tell you how many times that I and the town clerk and the town secretary and town administrator <laughs> have looked at the warrant and said, OK, yes. <laughs> these, we're going to spend some time on these, and these other ones we're going to zip right through. And then <laughs> just the opposite. The, the ones we think we're going to spend a lot of time on just go whoosh right through. And the ones we think are complete no-brainers, we end up discussing very thoroughly. And that's okay. That's part of the process. But you never know. If it has to do with dogs, you can assume we're going <laughs> to discuss that pretty thoroughly. That's uh, like at Select. And I remember being on the Select board, and I guess Larry has faced this too. Anything to do with dogs, you're, you're going to get you're going to get people engaged in the, in that. Uh, did you have a question? Dave? Okay. How many articles get? It, it's up to the selectmen. Uh, this year we have 35. Usually it's in the 25 to 30 neighborhood. This year we have 31. It's always a process. I mean, the selectmen are responsible for preparing the warrant and bringing it forward. And it's always a process of, uh, like any, any um, process like this where you often start with a lot and as it goes through the process of winnowing, selecting, deciding what's really ready, it, it tends to tighten up and become fewer. Usually, and this is nothing scientific about this, but uh, I think we usually have 25 to maybe 30 articles on our typical town meeting more. Sometimes fewer, sometimes more, but right in that neighborhood. And they can be added by citizen petition. Ten people. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. This year we don't have any citizen petitions. Right. We often do have citizen yeah. petition articles. This year we, we do not. <coughs> and it's fair, as Larry said, it's fairly easy to, um, to get a petition article on the warrant if a group of citizens or if one citizen wants to, to write it up and get um, enough, well, it all it takes is 10 vote, registered voters to sign off on it. That can get it on the warrant and that'll put it before the town meeting. Most of the others come from departments and whatnot. You can, you know, see who responds to it. Yeah, if you look through the warrant, I mean, there's the article, and uh, it'll say what the recommendations are. There's a summary, and it'll say what the rec recommendations are from the advice from the selectmen and advisory, and uh, maybe capital planning, and uh, and it'll say who the sponsor is, and the sponsor is the board or department or committee who brought it forward to the selectmen to get on the warrant. They're the ones whose, whose business it is that they want to take taken care of. For instance, this year, well, in recent years, uh, the planning board has had a lot of business on our town meeting warrants. 
uh, they've been they've been a busy group. But um, if you look at look at this warrant, just look under the sponsors, you'll see a, a wide range of town departments and committees. Um, that just I just reminded myself. I've said this before, and it's always a confusing thing to people, and I understand it because I was frankly confused about it myself until I started doing this, but the difference between an article and a motion. The, the articles that appear here are, um, I just always describe them as agenda items. This is, uh, the warrant goes out to the town, townspeople and warns them we're gonna have a town meeting and we're gonna be dealing with these pieces of business. Now, the articles, the way we do it in Bolton is we write these articles for the most part, as if they were motions. And when we come to, um, when we start the meeting, we start going through them sequentially. And I'll say, what's your pleasure in Article 1? And it's uh, usually the, someone from the Board of Selectmen says, I move, Mr. Moderator, I move the article, which means I make a motion saying exactly what it says in this article. An article itself is, the phrase is often used, is not self-starting. An article is not in and of itself a motion. Someone actually has to put that before the meeting. And there's some extraneous wording in an article that really is not part of a motion, like to see if the town will X, Y, Z, or do or act relating thereto. That wording at the beginning and end is part of the article, but it's not part of the motion. Like if you're in a meeting of uh, whatever, the Board of Selectmen, and um, Someone wants to uh, see if we'll make cerulean, cerulean blue the official town color. You, you don't say, I move to see if the Board of Selectmen will make cerulean blue the official town color or do or act relating thereto. What you say is, I move that we make cerulean blue the official town color. And then that gets seconded, discussed, and we end up with green as a kind of, you know, color or something. But, uh, that comes up. Uh, usually people notice that when the main motion made before the meeting is not exactly the same as what appears in the warrant. And, and that's okay um, within certain bounds. If the sponsor, for instance, Article 2 in here in this year's town warrant, the selectman from the selectman is asking for an amount of money, uh, a sum of money that's not defined. And um, we can't put a motion before the meeting saying, we move that we take a sum of money and put it in this account. Well, huh? So at the meeting, the selectmen are going to have to make a motion that is somewhat different from the article, only in that they'll replace the wording a sum of money with some dollar amount. And that's fine. Uh, and in, in the Commonwealth, it's OK to, um, in, a, in an article, to not put a dollar amount, and just on almost, except for the budget, on almost anything. We don't do that. It's a much better practice to put the dollar amount you think you're going to need. Um, and then a lot of times, uh, if it doesn't say a sum of money, it might say um, X dollars or a lesser amount or uh, no more than X dollars or something like that, so that the people people reading the warrant know there's some limit to, to how much we're going to appropriate, or we might appropriate here with this motion. But a, uh, and it happens often where when an article is prepared and put forward and printed in the warrant, uh, that's weeks before the town meeting. And something might change. Some board or committee might, might have had something change in their, I don't like this, like the planning board. There may be something, something that has changed. I'm not picking on them, but something could have changed from the time they had the article submitted to when the town meeting actually starts, where they need to change a phrase or drop a phrase or add some words, or as long as it's within the scope, as it's referred to, of the, of the article, it's okay to do that. And they can make a main motion that is different from the article that appears in the warrant, as long as it's within the, as long as the moderator determines it's within the scope of that article. As long as any reasonable voter could have read that article and realize we're going to talk about this piece of business that's going to involve this amount of money, plus or minus. That's where the, uh, that 
phrase to do or act relating thereto, it's kind of a catch-all, means um, or something pretty darn close to this in different words. Clear as mud? I mean, <laughs> I'd say I, when I was on the selectman, the moderator, the then moderator would sometimes talk to us about the distinction between an article and a motion. I remember sitting there thinking, huh, okay if you say so. <laughs> but it has, over, over the years, it has become clearer to me. Anyway, trust me. An article is not necessarily a motion, and the main motion put before the meeting doesn't have to be exactly as it appears in the article, as long as it's pretty darn close. Uh, televising town meeting. We, um, since we have our TV representative here, um, we re record and then delay what's called delay broadcast our town meeting so that anyone, after the fact, anyone could watch what happened at town meeting. Uh, some towns do live broadcasts of town meeting where it's live, it's real time. And uh, I had done a survey a year, a couple years ago maybe, of uh, open town meetings uh, through the Mass Moderators Association website, or uh, listserv. And um, my results, and the, end, the number was not huge of respondents, but um, it was very clearly pretty much 50-50, about half of them recorded and, and uh, did a delay broadcast, and about half of them did a live broadcast. And uh, it's really up to the, well, the moderator and the, ultimately I think uh, the moderator has a whole lot of authority there, but uh, it's something that I would not make a unilateral decision about, would work with the selectmen and the, our TV folks and the advisory committee and uh, everybody related, everybody interested in town meeting government <coughs> as to how we how we handle televising. But for now, it's, it's televised, it's recorded, and then uh, broadcast later, delayed broadcast. And uh, Bolton Access TV is very good about getting it up and, and running pretty soon, the next day at least, if not that same night. But you can usually see uh, if you miss part of town meeting because you were only there for part of it, which is okay, uh, you can watch it the next night or the next day whenever it's on uh, to see what else happened. If a town meeting goes into, looks like it's going into a second night, mm -hmm. how, you know, when you get to 10, 30, 11, as, as moderator, what, do you wait for a motion, or how, how do you decide when to, when to break it? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, <coughs> generally, I will see where we are at about 10.30-ish, and, um, I would not make a unilateral decision on that. I would, I would pull the meeting uh, if people wanted to continue, depending and see where we are, how many articles are left on the warrant. If people wanted to continue for the, um, uh, through the rest of the warrant that night or, or adjourn to the, the following night. Usually by the time you get to 10.30 or 11, unless you only have like one article left, um, people are pretty well wrung out. And, um, it usually makes sense to adjourn, it's called adjourn to a time certain, which is the next, well, usually the next night at seven o'clock at the same time. Uh, and that, that actually is a motion that's made before the meeting, seconded and voted by the meeting, by majority vote. And that's, um, most of our town meetings are one night, but we've, we've had a number that have gone two nights. It's not uncommon. Most town, or many towns, have multiple night town meetings. I mean, some of them go on for weeks, literally weeks. <laughs> Not every night. They may go one or two nights a week for like four or five weeks. I mean, it's incredible. Uh, some of the larger towns. And even some that are our size or close to it will have multiple night town meetings. And others that are larger than ours seem to always get it done in one night. It's, mm -hmm. it's remarkable how much difference there is um, among towns in the way that the character of the town and um, of the town meeting, for instance, and um, the traditions um, and the customs. Uh, there's a lot of, as I mentioned at the beginning, there's mass general law, which everybody has to follow, and then there are local bylaws, which each town has to follow its own bylaws. And then after that, it's, uh, it's tradition and custom. 
And um, that is, a lot of it is passed down from year to year over time. And uh, to be honest, a lot of it is up to the individual moderator, his or her, how he or she decides to run the meeting and what kind of rules uh, or guidelines he or she sets up to run a, an orderly meeting. And as moderators change, those may change as well. And uh, so over time, I mean, as with any custom or tradition, they tend to stick around, but they can change over time too. So, uh, I mean, like there are, there are some towns that have bylaws, for instance, that, um, that uh, put a max amount of speaking time on people speaking from the floor or max amount of presentation time on people making presentations to the meeting and uh, or a max number of times a any one person can speak before the meeting on any one motion. We don't have any of that. We're, we're fairly uh, loose as far as that kind of thing goes. But every town is different. Can the results be challenged in any way other than a special town meeting or the following town meeting? Like, a, is there a court? Um, the results of a, of a, of a vote? Like a of a vote, yeah. Uh, uh, for the most part, no. It'd be help, helpful to have an actual example of what you're talking about. Do you have an actual I don't example? Have an actual okay. <laughs> uh, like I said, it's, if, a, if it's a voice vote, that can be challenged by seven voters, which then makes it a counted vote. And once the counted vote is counted, that, that can't be challenged unless someone can show there is some error or, or impropriety with the voting process itself, which is rare. Uh, and once a town meeting has dissolved, the business of that meeting is done. So even in the courts or other, uh, you said it was the, the legislative body or, or whatever of the town. Are there other right. bodies that I guess can change those results in any way? Uh, the state attorney general's office, if someone were to file a complaint with the state attorney general's office for some reason uh, about an action that was taken at a town meeting, the state attorney general's office would review that and then decide um, uh, what action to take. I've never seen that happen, and I don't know what actions they would take. But, um, but yeah, the state, if you want to go anywhere uh, after a town meeting is done, if someone wants to go anywhere after a town meeting is done to challenge something, uh, the state attorney general's office would be the place. Uh, um, Maybe it would help to know that all the articles on the warrant have been examined for their wording by town council to make sure that they are in compliance with all the existing laws of the state of Massachusetts in other, in other ways. Yes, that's all. Yeah, everything in here is thoroughly vetted over months and months uh, by the, the sponsors, by the advisory committee, by the selectmen, uh, by uh, input from people sitting in and participating in all those meetings, then vetted by town council. And uh, by the time it makes it into this document, these, these are pretty well crafted articles. We're all human and uh, mistakes can happen. Uh, usually they're just little, little things uh, of no great consequence. But uh, the fact is that that, those can't conflict with state laws or Yes, that is, as Bob was saying, that is one of the things that town council, I mean, town council looks at, is one of the last uh, <coughs> stages of, of vetting on the, on the warrant, on the articles on the warrant. But there are times, like on zoning articles, the attorney general has to sign off on them, and there are times when towns are too aggressive to say, no medical marijuana at all, and the attorney general say, no, you can't do that, and, and so that's a... So it's nothing wrong with, with the procedure at town meeting, but mm -hmm. there are instances in which the, uh, you know, the, the, the voters exceeded their authority. Yeah. yeah. That's another thing about uh, the role of the moderator, for instance. Um, I'm not a lawyer, and, um, and I don't play one on TV or anything. <laughs> but um, I, The moderator's role is to regulate the meeting and to uh, decide questions of order and to be sure everything is, all procedures are followed properly. I have no um, competence and no authority to comment on the legality of, of any motion that comes before the meeting. 
if I think there's some question about it or I'm led to believe there's some question about some, the legality of some motion before the meeting, and we always have town council at our town meeting, I will often ask town council to give us an opinion for the meeting. But the moderator's role is to, uh, is process, really. It's not content. And um, I mean, there's a it's kind of a, a gray area there, but, but um, if the process is done correctly, and unless it's something really glaringly wrong, um, we put it before the meeting, see what happens. And as Larry said, if, if the meeting does inadvertently, usually, uh, uh, overstep its authority to, to do something, then it'll bounce back from the, from the Attorney General's office, which the town clerk is responsible for recording all of the votes taken at town meeting and forwarding all of that documentation to the State Attorney General's office. And they then uh, review it and let us know if, if we're good. We're almost always good. Uh, or if there's if there any questions or issues. Well, we've, been, we've been on this motion for an hour now. Who's <laughs> <laughs> the question? Yeah. <laughs> Not debatable. Can we move to adjourn? <laughs> well, we should dissolve we should this dissolve. dissolve this information session. Uh, so that's that's a, a broad overview of town meeting, and had some really good questions here uh, this evening. Town meeting is, of course, our town, annual town meeting is a week from yesterday. It's this coming Monday at the high school, seven o'clock. Uh, we want everyone to be there, and. Um, if need be, we will continue Tuesday night at the high school to finish it up, uh, also starting at 7 o'clock. And then town election is uh, a week from the town meeting, two weeks from yesterday, also at the high school auditorium. So everybody should, should come and vote. We don't, don't have any contested elections this year, uh, positions, but everyone, likes, everyone running likes to get some votes. So come show up and vote. Dave? I'm glad you mentioned that it's next Monday because uh, talking to voters who don't regularly come to town meeting, the perception is voting is always done on Tuesday. And, really? And, and uh, I, I run into an awful lot of people whose initial reaction is, oh yeah, I'll be there Tuesday. <laughs> well, oh really? I wonder where that came from. Well, I, I, as I say, uh, people are just used to having... Oh, you mean gen general elections? General elections gotcha. are always on Tuesdays, gotcha. and they, they okay. somehow morph that into town meeting yeah. on a Tuesday. And yeah. So emphasizing Monday, yeah. Monday is, yeah. is a good idea. Monday, yeah. Monday, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, that's right, <laughs> is uh, our annual town meeting, and then a week later. Corona bottles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, the town clerk will be uh, giving out yeah. Corona and Dos Equis. Uh, <laughs> cerveza. With, with your wine, with your wand. <laughs> well, thank you all for attending. Um, this was uh, interesting. This is, as most of you probably know, this is my last town meeting as town moderator, and um, this will be my last information session as yeah. town moderator. So thank you for coming and participating, asking some good questions. And I'll see all of you next Monday night at high school. All right? We don't actually have to dissolve. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Oh, thank you.